Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have, uh, I'm pleased and I have the honor and pleasure to have you with me again in this episode that uh, outlines and clarifies things that people haven't been aware before. Last uh, episode, we've been talking about uh, the hadith of Rasulullah where he said, Man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun huwa mawla. Whoever, I am his mawla. So let Ali be also his mawla. As we mentioned before, the word mawla had been mentioned abundantly many times in the Quran, but none of them have been used with the meaning of leader. And I have mentioned before that the Prophet doesn't say to the people, am I your Imam? No. The Prophet was always referring himself to be the Prophet, the Messenger. He doesn't say, whomever believe that I am his Imam, then let him take Ali as an Imam. No. This is not the speech of the Prophet ﷺ. No. But the point here isn't the context very important for more clarification? Because sometimes people take the word that has possible different meanings and they pick up and choose, you know, pick and, pick and choose. They pick for themselves the suitable meaning, but not suitable with the context, suitable for their cult. It is suitable for their cult. It is not suitable for the context. The context here we call it as a judge and the law of using the language. It is a law, not metaphoric, no. Metaphoric is not a judge, is not a law. And a matter of fact, it is out of, it is out of the law of speech. It is out of the law of speech and is chaotic. If people know that they are falling, they are cornered in, in a way, they can run away from being cornered by giving the word another meaning. And they say, this metaphoric. I'm not, I'm not gonna drift you from subject to another, but this is a very important thing. Remember this. Context, as we call it in Arabic, as is very important in every sentence, in every paragraph. Because if we have taken the word from its context, this will be considered as a matter of tahrif. Tahrif means um, assertion, twisting the meaning, manipulating, Therefore, let's get back to the hadith. Man kuntu mawla, fahada aliyun huwa mawla. There was a sort of disagreement between <coughs> Burayda, a companion, and Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali was sent by the Prophet to Yemen to collect their um, alms and charity. Some of his companions who went with him to Yemen, they wanted some of these things, and Ali was uh, reluctant. He was refusing. Some of the companions had something in their hearts against him, and yet they started to show hatred to him. And by Allah, we believe that Ali was trustworthy. And he did not use, he didn't want to use any of those uh, properties of charity, he did not want to use it until it reached to the Prophet Sallallahu until it reaches the Prophet. That is the reason. Then one of the companions, whose name is Buraida, he started to complain Ali to the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet said to him, Atubghidu Aliyan. Do you hate Ali? Buraida did not want to lie, but he had something against Ali. 
in his heart. So that's why he said, yes, I do. Then the prophet said to him, do I have better right more than your own selves even? More than any soul of every believer among you? They said, yes. Then the Prophet said, whoever I am his mawla, then Ali is his mawla. So there is an occasion for this hadith. And that occasion in itself is a context. The Prophet was talking about loving Ali or not, hating Ali or not. So he was talking about a matter of love. He was not talking about a matter of leadership. He didn't say to Buraida, don't you believe that Ali is your leader? Now, if Buraida said no, while the Prophet said to him, don't you believe that Ali is the, is the leader? Then we will be obliged to take it as the Shia. Take it. That, that's a matter. It talks about, it is related to the matter of Imama, leadership. But the Prophet was asking Buraida this question. Do you hate Ali? And Buraida said yes. Then the Prophet said, whoever, I am his mawla. Then Ali is his mawla. And I mentioned to you many times, there are many, many verses in the Quran that talk about mawla within the meaning of love and closeness and loyalty. Because every believer is a lawyer to, to his brother believer. He should be loyal to him apart from the disbelievers. This is a general loyalty for every believer. And they should not hate one another. Because the element of loving one another has something to do. It is a great element for the matter of unity, the unity of this ummah. The, the ummah cannot have this unity if Muslims do not base their relationship on love and loyalty to themselves. Okay. Look, there's a continuation of the hadith. I want you to pay attention to my words. The hadith continues. Allahumma wali man wala wa aadi man aada. O Allah, be loyal and grant love to the one who, grant, who uh, gives loyalty and love to Ali. And be an enemy to the one who showed enmity to Ali. So what is the contrary of Mawla? Ada. Allahumma wali man wala. Wa adi man ada. So, so the, 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 the hadith in itself, with its context, it proves what I'm saying. The hadith has nothing to do with the matter of leadership, imama. It is a matter of lie. It's very clear. Wali, grant him closeness to you. Grant him love. Wa'adi, and be enemy. So the contrary of love is, en is, is enmity. And detest. And resentment. This is the meaning. Where did, where, did the, where did the Shia go with this hadith? They say it's, it, it is talking about the matter of leadership. That is not true. It's a lie. Look, there is something very important that I want you to pay attention to. We want to give you def the definition of the following words. Sunnah, thiql, aitrah. Sunnah, I think all of you know the meaning of that. This is the way, the methodology of the Prophet ﷺ. The approach, his approach, his attitude, the position he takes regarding all issues. His approval, his words, his actions, his approvals as well. All of these things are combined within the word sunnah, are con consisted with the word Sunnah. The word thiql 
means the, the thing, the, the heavy thing, the heavy. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the Quran as being a thiql, a heavy thing. And al itra that it is a heavy thing. One of them is greater than the other. The Quran, for sure, it is the greatest heavy matter. And al itra that means the family of the Prophet ﷺ, are also a heavy matter, an important matter. But it is less, it is the minor thiql, while the Quran is the major thiql. Okay, Atra means family. Now we finish this. Another issue. The text is divided into two categories. Any text. Ambiguous and weak. I mean the chain of narration is weak. Ambiguous and weak. This is disregarded, not considered. Okay. There's another thing, is, which is, uh, it is ambiguous, but it's authentic. Okay. Being authentic is good. But to use something ambiguous, you shouldn't do that. For example, the matter of leadership of Ali. The Shia bring a lot of evidences. Most of them are weak. Some of them are authentic, but they don't. But but it does not serve their principles. It doesn't help them because these texts are ambiguous. They're not clear in their. They don't have a definite meaning of what they are telling us. Such as such as the Hadith of Mawla. Hadith is, if the Prophet wanted Ali, he wanted to nominate him as a leader. Why he uses a word that had never been mentioned in the Quran with him, with him, with him the meaning of leadership. Why? Deceiving us? Putting us in traps? Trapping us? For what reason? Why the Prophet did not use the word khilafa, imama? which would have been able to solve the problems between two great nations now in the Summa. So the Prophet did not use the word Imam or Khalifa. I'll give you an example. Allah said in the Quran, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaaka khalifatan fil ardi fahkum bayna al-nasi bil haqqi wa la tattabi'i al-hawa Allah is saying, O oh Dawood, we have set you as a viceroy on earth. Khalifa. And also the word leadership, we use for the leadership, the matter of leadership, the word Khalifa. So, Allah said, we have made you a khalifa on earth to Dawood. Then, fahkum. Then, judge between them. Lead them between people by truth. And never follow the desire which will divert you from the way of Allah. It's, it's clear. We made you khalifa. So lead and judge. It's very clear. The Prophet did not use the word Khalifa. He used the word Mawla. So remember this. You, the text may be definite in, in, uh, uh, in meaning, definite in, in its chain of narration, that means it's authentic. This is what we need to be definite in meaning and definite in chain, in its chain of narration. That means it should be for any text that you use as an evidence for yourselves, then 
the text that you're using should be clear, not ambiguous, but clear, and it should be authentic. The evidences of the Shia, either it is authentic, but not clear, not definite in meaning, which is not evidence. It is not evidence to us. Okay? Or it may be definite in meaning, but it's not authentic. Yes, other, time, other, other times not definite and not authentic. Unless you bring this, you use this issue, and that is to bring uh, a text which is authentic and clear. If you don't do that, then whatever you bring to us has no base, no ground. It's not accepted. One of them is this hadith. Man kuntu mawlahu fahada aliyun huwa mawlahu. They want to tell you as well that, uh, now let's go to another hadith. That the Prophet ﷺ said, I have left among you two things by which if you uphold and adhere yourself to, you will never be misguided. The book of Allah and my sunnah. Shia now here, they come here and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you get that hadith from? We say to them in Muatta Malik, the book called Al Muatta. Al Muatta was collected, was written by Imam Malik just before the time of Bukhari wrote his book. So the Muslims at that time, they had Muatta Malik only. And it used to be the most authentic book that all people depend upon. But Bukhari, um, Bukhari's conditions were more strict than the way of Malik. That's why his book became, when he wrote it, it became more reliable than Muatta Malik. And now this is what we believe nowadays, that, uh, that Bukhari and Muslim are more reliable than the book of Muatta Malik. Kitab Allah wa Sunnati had been narrated in Muatta Malik. And there was a slight weakness in it. Irsal. Irsal means a tabi'i. Tabi'i means the one that uh, contemporized the Sahaba, but he did not contempo, uh, he did not have any kind of uh, contemporary to the Prophet We call that Tabi'i, a follower of the companions. This Tabi'i had narrated this hadith directly from the Prophet without mentioning the name of uh, the Sahabi, the companion. Note here that scholars such as Asiyuti and many other scholars, they considered the marasil, the, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, narrations that have been narrated by Tabi'een to the Prophet Sallallahu that are consisted in Muatta Malik are authentic. But nevertheless, let's say for the sake of argument that this hadith is weak. This hadith has been narrated also in Al-Hakim. It has many other, other chain of, chains of narration that elevate this hadith with, it, with its slight weakness to become Hassan. Hassan means Hassan li ghayrihi. Hassan li ghayrihi means it is by itself weak. But um, many other narrations which are also slightly weak will cooperate to raise this hadith to become authentic. And that kind of authenticity is the, the lowest kind of authenticity. 
the hadith is not mutawatir. Mutawatir means uh, there are there are yani, unnumerous narrators for this hadith. We call it mutawatir. The other one that I mentioned to you about Muwatta Malik, it it is authentic, yani, barely became authentic because it's in itself slightly weak. So therefore we say that this hadith is authentic. But if you don't want it, we have no problem. We can bring you from other sources that the Prophet ﷺ said. For example, Alaykum bi sunnati. You should follow my sunnah. Wa sunnat al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiin min ba'di. And the sunnah of the, uh, the way of the leaders, um, uh, uh, rightly guided leaders after me. And he's talking about um, the, the best kind of leadership. Uh, in the time of Islam, such as the time of Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and even Ali. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them all. Another hadith which is in Bukhari, I hope I'm not wrong, where the Prophet said, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي Whoever decides to give up my sunnah, فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي He is not of me. So there is an encouragement in many hadith to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only this, we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ If you ever disagree on a matter, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Then return it to Allah and the Messenger. That means the judgment, the judgment that should be you returning is the book of Allah. If you, if you ever disagreed on something, then return it to Allah and to His Messenger. If you ever believe in Allah and the hereafter. ذَلِكَ خير That is best. وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا And the best consequence. You know, people may disagree on something and not, they do not return it to the book and the sunnah. And their disagreement will grow, will worsen, will get worse. But always, returning your disagreement to the book and to the sunnah to be the judge of what you disagree about or with, is it has the best consequence as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. So, as a result, every Muslim is ordered, is obliged to return everything to the book and to the sunnah. Starting with Abu Bakr, passing by Umar, and passing by every Muslim until the day of judgment. So therefore, when we talk about the sunnah, don't tell me, no, you should return it to the atra. Because we say the book and the sunnah. Shia say, no. The Prophet said, I have left with you two heavy things. One of them is heavier than the other. Then the first one is the book of Allah. And the second one is my atra, my atra, my family. So they say, see, the hadith you have in Wata Amerik is weak. <coughs> but this my atra, it had been narrated excessively, abundantly. There are many narrations which makes this hadith more authentic than the hadith of Muwatta Malik. It is not true. Now this hadith, by each narration of this hadith, I have left uh, for you the book of Allah and my family. In every hadith, is, it has also a slight weakness, sometimes a big weakness, a big weakness. But scholars had accumulated all of those narrations and they said, all right, because of, because of the abundance of those narrations, 
and many of them have uh, a slight weakness, then we consider this hadith to be hasan. Yani it barely became uh, authentic. It's, this, it's almost the same thing with the hadith, the book of Allah, and my sunnah. But let's say for the sake of argument that this hadith in Muta Malik is weak. We have the Quran. It is telling us. If you ever disagree on something returning to the book of Allah and to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The Quran did not say, if you disagree on a matter, return it to Allah and to the Atra. He didn't say that. He said to, the, to Allah and the Messenger. Returning the thing to Allah means his Quran. And returning things to the, to the, to, to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that means his Sunnah. Why do you have to confuse people and tell them, no, not the sunnah, atra. Well, let me ask you this question. The, the, the atra came after, after the generation of the Prophet and his companions. They did not live, they did not see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm talking about Jafar al-Sadiq, al-Hasan al-Askari, Musa al-Rida, al-Kadhim, uh, Abu Jafar, etc., etc. Zayn al-Abideen, even Hassan al-Hussein. We, we do not have much hadith directly from Hassan al-Hussein to the Prophet ﷺ because they were, they were young and small. They were kids when the Prophet was alive. Are you telling me that the companions do not deserve that we take the hadith from them? Why not? Like one of those uh, big sheikhs, now they call him a big sheikh. They call him a big sheikh. He said, we don't need to take our narrations from Sahaba. Oh, wait a minute. You have a great need to take the Quran from Sahaba. Who wrote it? Who had surrounded the Prophet and took every uh, uh, incident of revelation? The Prophet was surrounded by the companions. They, they used to be writing every word that he is revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who did that? Jafar al-Sadr, Zayn al-Abideen, al-Kadhim, al-Murtada, al-Sharif al-Radi? No. The companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So since you have accepted their testimony, their collection of the Quran, and why do you... Why are you reluctant from taking the hadith from them? Why not? Do we need to be more strict regarding the hadith of Rasulullah? You have admitted that the Quran is the heavier thiqal. Heavier. So why Allah let his heavier thiqal to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which you're not pleased with, and you accuse many of them, not only that, but you believe that most of the companions were apostated right after the Prophet's death. They left Deen, except couples of people. Some say, except for three companions. Some say seven companions. Bismillah, mashallah. Then who opened Egypt? Who opened Africa? Who opened North, North Africa? Who arrived to Europe? <coughs> who? By three companions? By seven companions? Come on, be realistic. And don't be deceived by emotions, as we find many other religions do the same. They deal with their religion emotion, in an emotional way. Yet they do not function their minds. As a result, you can see pictures, idols, statues. They speak to the statues. And they expect the statue of Mary, for example, to shed tears. And they make a big, they make a big propaganda over, the, over, over these issues that I have seen. The eyes of uh, Mary's statue, you know, shedding tears, etc., etc. 
So the question is, do we take our hadith from the, from the companions of the Prophet? Why not? We have taken the Quran already from them. So why don't we take the hadith from them? Why don't we take the sunnah from them? Again I say, the sunnah have been collected by the Sahaba who already collected the Quran. So why don't we take the sunnah from them as well? Ali himself, what was his source beside the Quran? Atra or sunnah? There's no doubt. Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's, there's no doubt about that. There is no doubt about that. So using the word, I have left with you two heavy things, the Quran and the Sunnah, uh, and the Atra. What is he, in your perspectives, O Shia, what, what is the Prophet talking about? Is he talking about that the Atra, the family of the Prophet, are Imams? Where do, you, where do you set this Hadith? In which subject? In which issue? The issue of leadership? The issue of Asma, uh, how do you call Asma in English? Uh, infallible, infallible, infallible. That means sinless. Where do you put it? Imama? That's not true. Because it's not talking about Imama. I have left two things with you. Mm -hmm. Let's see now here in Sahih Muslim. There is hadith in Sahih Muslim narrated by narrated by uh, Zayd ibn al-Arqam that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Amma ba'd to be preceded." Allah ayyuhan nas, O people, fa inda ma ana bashar. I am verily a human being. Yushiku an yati a rasul rabbi fa ujib. It is about that the messenger of my Lord comes, then I will respond to his call. That means when the messenger of Allah, that means the angel of death, when he comes, then I have to respond. That means the Prophet is saying there's a short time that. It is that this time is coming shortly that the angel of death will come to me and I have to respond to his call for death. Now, or sometimes they use the word thakalain, not thakalain. Okay. I'm, I'm leaving with you two heavy matters. The first of those two is the book of Allah. In it, there is, there is a matter of guidance and light. Then, take the book of Allah and uphold, take it strongly, catch it. Cleanse yourself to it. The Prophet started to encourage. He kept encouraging the following of the book. The adhering of the book. Then he said, then. Then he said, And my family. I remind you, be mindful to Allah concerning my family. Be careful, fear Allah regarding my family. And you know what? The most people who, who need this advice of the Prophet ﷺ are those who slander his family today. They call themselves that they follow Ahlul Bayt and they yet, yet they do not know that Aisha is one of Ahlul Bayt. Aisha is one of them, as we proved it last week. <coughs> so they deserve to consider this advice of the Prophet ﷺ because they did not fear Allah 
regarding the wives of the Prophet, the family of the Prophet Some of the family of the Prophet, they hate, they even curse. And some, other, some others, they, they exaggerate in them to the extent that they worship them. To the extent that they call, they call themselves, or their children, sorry, Abd Ali, the servant of Ali. Abd al Hussein, the servant of Hussein. Abd al Zahra, the servant of Fatima. As Christians say, Abd al Masih, the servant of Jesus. Abd Maryam, the servant of Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Abd, Abd. In Islam, this religion is based on Tawheed. Tawheed, don't tell me that you have accepted this and you mean by that some other meaning. No, no, no. Because you know what? You're not only calling your, your son the servant of Ali, the servant of Amir, the servant of Mahdi, the servant of Zahra, but you are calling them for your need and for your salvation. That what proves that when you use the word Abd, servant, to them, you did not mean a matter of serving them, working for them. No. And they're not available for you to serve them. What do you do to them? Do you clean their kitchen? What do you do? You, you have nothing. You have no relationship between you and them unless you're worshiping them. And that is why you raise up your hands and you say, Oh, Hussein, help me. Which is shirk. It is just like a Christian who says, Oh, Mary, help me. Hussein is a human being. Maryam is a human being. So what is the difference? Is it, is it a matter of difference in names? It is only different in names? That what makes, what makes it haram to the Christians, but makes it halal to the Shia? It doesn't make sense. So he said, I remind you, to fear Allah concerning my family. That's one issue. The other issue is, I don't, I don't know if I, if I have addressed this question. The question is, are the itra? Yeah, I did not ask this question, but I want you to pay attention to this question, which is very important. Are the Atra obliged to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet or they have an independent source of Sunnah for themselves? If they want to practice the way of Rasulullah, okay, don't they follow his Sunnah? You say to me, yes, for sure. The Atra, the family of the Prophet, should take their way of religion from the Quran, for sure. And from the way of the Prophet, which we call Sunnah. So what, what, is, what is the balloons you have made? You did not make any point. It has no sense. By saying that, no, don't follow the Sunnah, but follow the Atra. Well, the Atra must have taken this Sunnah, the knowledge they have, they have taken it from the Sunnah of the Prophet. So why do you have to refer us indirectly to the Sunnah of the Prophet while we are uh, 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 referring you to the direct Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Why do we have, if we want to take the Sunnah of the Prophet, to take it from someone who was not living with the Prophet, did not hear from the Prophet, did not even see the Prophet? Why? You see, you're not making a point. And we know that the way the way of the Prophet's Sunnah had been collected by the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. One of them is Abu Huraira, upon whom uff, Shia hates too much. The Shia hate him. I don't know why. What did he do to you? I wonder. Why do you hate the man? They said because he claimed that he memorized 5,000 hadith. While he became Muslim, at the seventh year of Hijrah. That means very late. So how did he, how was he able to memorize all of this hadith? Don't, don't panic, don't, no problem. The Prophet made dua to him. And he said, 
who is he that will be extending his clothes, just like the one I'm, I'm wearing, for example, just extend it like this, then return it to himself. And after returning it to himself, he will never forget any of what I, uh, what I say to him. What I say to him. Yani hadith. He will not be forgetting my hadith. Abu Huraira said, I have done it. The Prophet was in front of me. I extended my turban like this. And I opened it. Then I closed it. And after that, I never forgot any hadith of Rasulullah uh, uh, If it doesn't work in your mind, if it doesn't work in your mind, it doesn't mean that uh, you're right. Look, according, according to your, uh, sorry, according to your belief, and this is something that I, oh, sorry. Yeah. According to your book, Al-Kafi, Al-Kafi, and I think everybody knows about this, this book, Al-Kafi, let me, Give me one second, please. Hmm. If you're talking about mind, things that make sense and other things that do not make sense, well, let me narrate this hadith for you, which is authentic according to the Shia. It's in your book, Al-Kafi. <coughs> he said, I have asked Jafar al-Sadiq about the earth. It's over what? He said, the earth is over the whale. The earth is on the whale. He said, all right, so the whale is on what? He said, the whale is on the water. He said, the water is on what? He said, the water is over a rock. He said, the rock is over what? He said, the rock is over a soft horn of a buffalo, of a bull. And he said, then the bull is over what? <laughs> he said, is on the sand. Did you understand that? Did you understand that? I didn't understand it either. It's authentic. It's narrated in the book Al-Kafi, volume 8, Page 89. Page 89. So don't tell me that that doesn't make sense. No. You're wrong. Bye. Let's get back to our subject. The other problem is, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They have narrated, they have really, the Shia have deformed the way of the Prophet's family. Do you know that they say that the book, which is the heavier, the heavier thiqal, is changed? Is changed? It's not reliable? The companions had played in it? Oh my God. Here it says, it's in uh, the book called Al-Kafi, uh, volume 8, page 634. It's been narrated by Abu Abdullah, Jafar al-Sadiq, that, uh, that he had been asked about the book, I think, and he said, the Quran. He said, إِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ الَّذِي جَاءَ بِهِ جِبْرَائِيلِ عليه السلام إلى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سبعة عشر ألف آية. The Quran that was revealed on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم contained seventeen thousand verses. Seventeen thousand verses. Now, obviously, you know that the Quran contains nowadays six thousand and two hundred ayah and some. 6,200 ayah. Tell me. The difference would be, ele uh, sorry, yeah, 11,800 missed ayah. You may say that maybe the narration is weak. I say no. 
it is not weak to the Shia. To me, I don't believe in the book. But to the Shia, yes, they believe that this book is authentic. Some of them say not all the uh, Al-Kafi authentic, but uh, not all of it. But some of it are authentic, some others are not authentic. All right, no problem. We have this book called Mir'at al-Uqul for al-Majlisi. Mir'at al-Uqul for al-Majlisi. Al-Majlisi is the one who claimed to be making critical checkings to all the narrations of this book, Al-Kafi. And when he reached to this narration, he said, this narration is authentic. The book Mir'at al-Uqul, volume 15, page 525, page 525. In this page, what did he say? He said, this hadith is authentic and there is no doubt. It is obvious. It is not hidden that this narration as well as many other authentic narrations are so clear that the Quran had been changed. Some of its verses had been omitted and some of it are changed. And I believe, that's what he said, to my uh, perspective, that the narrations proving the changing of the Quran are mutawatir. Mutawatir is the highest kind of authenticity. The highest kind of correct narrations, mutawatir, subhanAllah. That's what I said. So how do you say to me, don't take from the Sunnah, take from the Atra. But the Atra are telling me here that the Quran is changed. How? How would I be possibly taking anything from this book? Because the reliability of the Quran is my red line. If those books tell me that the, the book of Allah is changed, how can, uh, uh, how can a Christian become a Muslim? We say to the Christians, come to us, your book is changed. Your book is changed. But if he wants to come to our religion, we have the Shia who say that the Quran is changed. Look at this book. This book called Musbah Al-Musbah Lil-Kaf'ami. It's well-known book. It's well-known Shia book. In this book, it says, O oh Allah, curse those two statues of Quraysh. And they mean by that Abu Bakr and Omar. Oh Allah, let your curse be upon them. For they have changed, they have destroyed your religion. They have corrupted your people. They have perverted, changed your Quran. Change your Quran. Abu Bakr and Omar, they changed the Quran. Since I've been talking about the red line, after the red line, that is the Quran. Those two companions are our red line. Whoever has no good regarding those two greatest companions, said the Prophet, we should never be expect any good from him regarding this ummah. Because to every Muslim, those two companions are the greatest ever among all people in humanity after the Prophets, peace be on them, and, af and after the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. And also they have a narration, it's in uh, Al-Kafi, that uh, the father of Ja'far al-Sadiq, he said, the Quran was revealed, it consisted in itself four subjects. A quarter of the Quran is about us, about the family of the Prophet, the sons of the Prophet. Quarter of the Quran, but we find nothing in it now. They're telling us, that these the things have been omitted by Abu Bakr and Umar because they were so keen to be the leaders after the Prophet. That's unfair. That's unfair. Uh, that's a long story. And the time is very short. And I think my time is up. 
I'm going to continue with you, inshallah, on the same issue, continuing many things that we have to clarify to you about the truth and the Shia. Thank you for being with me. I am full, fully honored to be having you, and I wish to be having you also next week, inshallah. Be with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.